According to the Anti-Defamation League, reported anti-Semitic incidents are at an all-time high in the United States. The AP reports, quote, the Anti-Defamation League found that the number of anti-Semitic incidents in the U.S. increased by more than 35 percent in the last year. And anti-Semitic and white supremacist propaganda in the U.S. also hit new levels. Earlier today, I sat down with Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt, U.S. Special Envoy for Monitoring and Combating Anti-Semitism and a Time 100 honoree. Here's our conversation. Ambassador, thank you for being here. I want to start with um, a pretty notable quote Jonathan Greenblatt, head of the ADL, wrote about you for Time magazine. Speaking about you, has courageously taken on anti-Semitism on campus, in the courts, and in the halls of power. Now she's battling the oldest hatred in a moment when anti-Jewish hate has surged to record levels in the U.S. and around the world. It's pretty sobering, and I think he, he captured the moment. Um, no, one, no one expected this. No one saw this coming. Uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, even, even less than that, if you talk to someone about anti, an American about anti-Semitism, they'd say, well, it's a problem overseas. But now we can't say that anymore. When I go overseas and I've been to many countries and talk to them about problems they have, et cetera, um, I can't say we figured it out. It's here at home and it's overseas. And it's, it's very debilitating. It's very debilitating because it's not just a threat to the welfare of Jews. And if it was just a threat to the welfare of Jews, I would say that's, that's sufficient for a government and a public. The pub Jews for now. Yeah. That's right. First of all, it starts with Jews, never ends with Jews. But, but more equally important is that it's a threat to democracy. Because the person who's an anti-Semite believes in a conspiracy theory. And now we've heard so much about conspiracy theories in recent years. I used to have to explain what they were, but people know. Uh, and the conspiracy theory, of course, is that the Jews control the banks, the media, the judiciary, the finances, everything. So if you believe so, one group is controlling everything, you believe um, democracy is a sham. Democracy is kaput, you know? When the likes of a Kanye West says the quiet part out loud, mm -hmm. what are the ramifications of that? The ramifications are horrendous. And he, of course, is not alone, so I don't want to focus only on him. But he has followers. And not only does he have followers, but he has followers amongst young people. In the middle schools and the high schools, the kids are getting, you know, oh, you Jew, oh, Hitler didn't kill it. And the kid who's saying it may not even know what they really mean by it. But it starts and then it escalates. But it's I'm 47 years old. I didn't ever experience that when I was in school, yet my 16-year-old hears about it today. Really? Oh, there's yes. your answer. There's your answer. And... Uh, what we have to do, I mean, right now, uh, under President Biden, there is an effort to come up with a national plan. What can government do to try to address this? But even the most spectacular plan won't be sufficient unless the public steps up to the plate and says this is unacceptable. So when you say the public has to step up, what does that look like? What, what do does I it do look when like? I leave here? When you, when you hear someone making a crack, oh, those Jews you got to say that that's, that's not acceptable. Now, sometimes people do it out of, I don't want to say innocence, but don't fully realize what they're saying. So you got to call them on it. Uh, and sometimes they do it out of maliciousness, and they've got, you've got, they've got to be told that's not acceptable here. Uh, your, your, your child comes home from school and makes some crack about the Jewish kids and this, that, or the other. Uh, you call them out. You say that's not acceptable. It's got to start in the kitchen. It's home. not just jokes, though. Right now, there is more and more organized That's media. Right. That's right. Dog whistling about globalists. That's right. The globe, the whole, the whole discussion of globalists. When they say global interests, cosmopolitan interests, in other words, not national, but who, by and large, either they're talking about Jews right from the beginning, or the person who was saying the pandemic. The pandemic was a secret effort for corporations to make money. Now, who, who is financially powerful enough? Who ha who's evil enough to do this kind of thing? Who, who knows how to act behind the scenes? And they end up with it. They either start with the Jews or they end so up with So what do it. we do with this? I can't change the mind of some of the groups, and I'm not going to mention them to give them any more publicity than they have, who are convinced that Jews are controlling things. But I have to get to the people who might be convinced by them. There'll always be haters. 
but we have to sort of put a cordon, uh, you know, around them so they can't spread their hate. Are, is there signs of progress? Are there good things to report? Yes, there are. More and more. First, there, there are a number of good things. First of all, um, the United States used to be one of the few countries in the world that had someone in this position to address the issue. There are now representatives in many countries. And I think the, the most striking thing, and people often say to me, is this the 1930s again? Is it? And, and about that I can answer definitively, no. In the 1930s, it was governments that were doing this. Governments were expelling people. Governments were throwing people out. Gover Nazi Germany. It's but people out. are running for office today well, they who have, have these views. They have to be kept. So the fear is the fear, it could it. be governments next. And now is the time to take this very seriously. But, but when a president of the United States, when the secretary of state says to me, uh, fight this, when the vice president of the United States says, fight this, when, when members of Congress from both sides of the aisle approach me when I'm in, in the Capitol and say, thank you for what you're doing, what can we do to support you? It's an encouraging sign. Is it a solution? Will we solve the problems? No, but we must contain it. You gotta look for the good. You gotta look for the light in the dark. There's a lot of darkness, but there's sparks of light. Ambassador, thank you for your time and thank you for your work. You're welcome, thank you.